Lisa Klaus has received more <laughs> reviews on my nationally <laughs> And now a Lisa commercial. Yes. For a new life of vision, <laughs> Good night, everybody. Right now at Lisa Klaus, we're offering 20% off. Honestly, uh, uh, Jason, our beloved IT help, uh, I, I do believe that um, the ad blocking would make this panel less funny. I think the ads are going to be very funny as we go through the YouTubes. I'm happy to talk LASIK. I had it <laughs> 10 out of 10. So, you know, full endorsement right here. Thank you for coming to our talk on LASIK and the benefits of not being um, nearsighted anymore. Ah, uh, lightweight. I went and got the whole cataract surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Paige, thank you for liberally unmuting um, without permission on our panel. I, I would like to encourage this spirit today. Oh, I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but first, I guess I should have officially introduced this. This is um, uh, humor and music or humor in music or music that's humorous or some sort of combination of the two words. And... Uh, we are having this conversation in the spirit of Friendsgiving, which is a uh, day, uh, multi-day, not day long, multi-day VCFA um, gathering of artists to uh, spread what we do and hopefully have that come back in terms of support for the, for the college and for uh, bringing in the next generation of artists. Um, so thank you all for being here. And uh, my name is Ravi uh, Krishna Swami. I am the faculty co-chair in the music department. Um, I don't think my wife Julie would say that I'm very funny, which uh, makes me feel weird about hosting this panel. But I have worked on a lot of comedy over the years. Um, so uh, I'm really looking forward to talking with some amazing <clears throat> friends from the program. I should also mention, if you see this sort of black backdrop behind me, it's actually because Julie, who is in the, my wife, who's in the visual arts program, will be performing, giving, presenting a performance piece at 5.30 tonight, um, which is uh, not funny. <laughs> and that's all I'll say about it. No, it's, it's a powerful piece. Um, and so that's her backdrop, but it's gonna be zoomed in a little bit more. So um, my my background as a composer ran through um, jingles for a long time. And um, jingles can be really funny and uh, um, can often go for that, go in that direction to kind of, you know, cheaply get your attention um, while you're trying to walk away to get your chips in the middle of the game. So um, I've I've had the the uh, the the honor of selling lots of crap to people through music, <laughs> and uh, that's brought me in in touch with um, what makes things funny. And I think it's a really I actually in any time I've tried to work on comedy with students, um, I've often said that I feel like it's very hard to teach comedy because it's a moving target, um, and um, you know, what, what we find, what you find funny, what I find funny, are they the same thing? Will they be the same thing in five years? Who knows? Um, but my panelists, our panelists know, so I'm not gonna be trying to answer that, answering that myself. Um, so I'm gonna introduce um, the, our panelists now, um, and then maybe, maybe when we come back after they've introduced <laughs> themselves, maybe I'll play a couple of things that I've worked on. I'll, I don't want to start with my own stuff. Um, so um, kind of amazingly, three of the four panelists today um, were my students um, along the way to their MFA degrees. And, and and Margie, if I had only been taking students when you were here. Um, I mean, that's on you, not me. Yeah. So. Margie Halloran, um, our, uh, who is a big part of our program in multiple roles now. Um, Garrett Michael Steele, uh, Mario Inchowski, and Zachary Kohlmeyer um, will be uh, helping us to uh, figure out what's funny. Um, before I hand it off to you, I just want to say something about, I was thinking about this panel today, and I was thinking about how, um, Awfully, Zoom is is designed 
for comedy, for, for laughing together because of its sound engine, because it's built for business meetings. So the sound engine takes whatever voice is speaking and prioritizes that and pushes everything the, everything down. So if you all unmuted right now um, and started laughing, you wouldn't hear everybody in the room. It's not built for for laughter, which is a communal feeling. Like people laugh when they're in the room together. It's hard to get laughter to kind of, you know, spread in this format. So, um, so if if we feel like we need a little bit of energy today, I built a little sampler patch. Um, I've got some applause. I've got some cheering. Um, and then, I didn't know this was going to be morning talk radio. <laughs> and then, you know, one of the things that happened to me along the way in my in my long jingle road was um, acquiring sample libraries from Warner Brothers and Hanna Barbera. So I also have. And then some musical instruments that happen to be um, deeply embedded in our brains as semiotically funny sounds. It's a steel guitar, a little violin slide, and a violin pluck. <laughs> so. You're not holding out on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I have applause, booing, and cheering, but I don't have laughing, which is funny because it was it was hard to find a good sample for that. So. You all will have to do that today. So um, I will hand it off. I'd like each panelist now to um, uh, introduce themselves, and, and then I will DJ and play some of their work as they talk about themselves. Um, Mario, would you like to lead us off? Gosh, no, but I will. Better <laughs> you then, than me. <laughs> and then pick whoever you'd like to hand it off to from, from there. OK. Uh, Everybody, well, Mario. Is... Hello. Uh, yeah, my name is Mario Winchowski. I've been uh, mostly what, what I've been uh, doing is jingles, um, a few uh, shorter projects, and of course, um, a, a lot of originals. Uh, to me, uh, humor and music, um, uh, it, it's hard to, it's hard to uh, you know, pinpoint because uh, I use it as a coping mechanism. I'm, I'm, I'm just all messed up. So it's not a, a good definition that I can give you. Uh, I find humor in the, the juxtaposition and in the conflict of opposing uh, or, or, or seemingly disparate uh, disciplines or ideas. Uh, so a lot of what I do is that. I'm also fascinated by the idea of, of, of reusing cliche into, in, in building new metaphors. And uh, my favorite example is uh, the, the Mission Impossible example you knew what it was when it when it first came out and now when it's utilized if it's like jim carrey with the mission you, you know uh what's what's carried by the minute he's sneaking around he's skulking and suddenly something that was supposed to be uh, uh yeah, suspenseful or you know action is now funny uh because it's being recontextualized um uh, i try to do uh that a lot sometimes uh more successfully than others. Um, the, my first example would be uh, that section of affirmation, um, which uh, is a, a noir uh, piece, uh, noir jazz piece. Uh, the whole point of it is that um, the, the, the protagonist cannot redeem himself. He is, uh, he's, a, he's a loser. At the beginning, he's a loser at the end when he hasn't realized anything. And he does have one recurring catchphrase. Uh, at the time, the terminology for uh, 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 police were, one of them was a dick, a private dick. And of course, has other connotations right now. Uh, but uh, Robbie, that should be a good uh, intro. Is there a time code you want me to hit or from oh, the Oh, I thought I sent it. I'm so uh sorry. That's okay. Uh, you probably did, and I didn't. I didn't have to find it. To, to your email. Um, Let me. 
and while you find it, I will get that shared. Let's see. Optimize, share sound. Uh, yeah, but I, I can't see my screen now. <laughs> <laughs> if you press escape, I think you can see yours. So I can I'll put this up here. And come down here. One second. Oh, uh, 345. Ah, oh, beautiful. All right. I'm going to start it from about 330. 340. I'd seen that hair before. It was time for me to interrogate someone who was still alive. Raymond was surprisingly easy to find, or maybe not so surprising since he wasn't hiding. I found him at the address Stella gave me, an anonymous room in a flea bag hotel. I knocked. That he answered the door was surprising. He could hardly stand. The stench of stale booze made me dizzy and thirsty. I braced him. He had no fight left. His self-pity was a marvel to behold. He didn't know about the death of his sister and her husband. He'd spent the last few weeks drinking himself to death. The smell and the empty bottles corroborated his testimony. He had no money. What was left of his family had written him off. He had nothing and no one. He asked me if I believed in God. I'm not a priest, I told him. I'm a dick. I left him to get on with it. It's all about and, the timing. Yeah. And that, that becomes a, a refrain uh, that, that proves true at, at the very end, which is why I found that hilarious. Um, <laughs> I can't, um, I have a, a, since Robbie was playing those, those great uh, samples, um, I have Bimbo okay. at, four, at 414 which is one of my favorite things that I've done. And it, it's all, um, uh, you just, just put it on. See yourself. All right. And know you're not alone because this. Sorry, that's an ad, 414. Oh. Here we go. And let me just share it again. I wanted to bring that up too because uh, uh, when I was studying with Rick, who I thought I saw a moment ago, um, at that point he, he pointed out that uh, in most of my writing, my Latinness creeps in. 
And uh, more often than not, I would, I would uh, reject it. And he actually uh, convinced me to, to, to embrace it. Now I put it in everywhere because, you know, cha-chas during uh, uh, stressful moments, I also find really funny. And uh, so I, that's, that was the point of that one. I don't think you should ever use it again. No more, no more Latin music for, for you. No more ever. Okay. I guess I have one more and uh, I'll do an ad. Um, I'll do an ad. Yeah. Uh, can I just do the audio track? Yeah, sure. This is um, something uh, uh, I did for Bridget uh, Carson and I did it with uh, 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 Garrett uh, and, and Margie, they did others too. Um, uh, I stole, I didn't steal, I borrowed liberally from um, uh, Music Man. And uh, I wanted to use that, uh, that, uh, that Robert Preston, you know, uh, uh, trouble in River City with the tea around the Pia Center pool. And so, but uh, I, I got a chance to do that and, and talk about having diarrhea. And that's something that I found irresistible. And it sounds like this. Is this the Independence Pharmacy? Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. Running around town with the runs when you have to run around can run you down. Now, if you're feeling run down because you have to run around town while you have the runs, then run straight down to Independence, Independence, Independence Pharmacy. Yes, running around town when you have the runs is truly no fun at all. But you don't have to let it spoil your plans. Stop in at Independence Pharmacy today. They have everything you could need to regain control of those rebellious bowels. Medication, wipes, and bandages for those extreme cases. You can also have a chocolate malted while you wait to help take your mind off of things. Come meet the helpful staff at Independence Pharmacy before those runs run you down. But if you have to run around town, I have the runs Independence Pharmacy. Se habla español. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna bail there. I think I've taken more than five minutes. So tag Margie, you're it. <laughs> Why are you gonna do me like that? <laughs> the best part is I have heard that before and it still still gets me. Um, hello, I am Marjorie Halloran, known by my friends as Margie. I don't know. Uh, I currently mostly live in Austin, Texas. Um, I am a choral composer for the most part, but um, I do a lot of songwriting and um, I guess that's kind of where I let my sense of humor shine the most. Um, I'll just jump right in. I see the playlist is already scrolling here. Um, so uh, one of the things that I really like to use that I find funny um, is uh, just a small peppering of self-deprecating humor. Um, I've definitely seen this. This can be too much. Um, sometimes it can be a little too over the top and then it becomes just mean or sad. Um, so that's a line that I think can be difficult to walk when using sort of a self-deprecating style. Um, but I do like to poke fun at myself, um, kind of like Mario said, it's a little bit of a coping mechanism. Um, so I'll share a couple of examples of that. Um, if you want to pull up, it's a good thing. Um, uh, this one is sort of, um, oh goody, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this one I just sort of wrote on a whim, uh, af I think after somebody like called me a hypochondriac or something, which I am admittedly. Uh, so if we start at about 30 seconds, maybe we'll listen to like a verse or two of this one, um, as an example.
so I'll stop it there. Um, the kind of the the way the song progresses is oh thank you thank you um, the way the song progresses is sort of the revelation that the narrator has an anxiety disorder and you know one of the ways she's coping with this is being overly prepared for absolutely everything and this is where the title of the album ready for anything comes from um, but it's uh, it's it's kind of cathartic to to sort of put something that I'm self-conscious about into a funnier frame. It It is a coping mechanism. Um, uh, another song of mine along the same lines is Please, um, also known as the basketball song. And um, this one, uh, I think most of you in this audience probably know me, or at least have met me, but some of you have not. Um, but I am extraordinarily tall and I get just literally daily comments about this and it's something that has caused me a great deal of trauma over the decades. Um, so I put it into a song. Um, and this one took me seven years to write, um, to, uh, to kind of get out what I wanted to say. Oh no, Robbie's saying something in the chat. Is it relevant to me? Oh yeah, yeah, that's the thing. People have seen me for the first time in two years after meeting on Zoom and they kind of give me this sort of like, what, um, response. Because they do not expect me to be six foot four. Um, so let's play, uh, let's start at the beginning and I'll probably do like a verse and a chorus of this one. Um, but this one, uh, I don't know, this is one of my hits if, if people's reactions are to be judged accurately. <laughs> same throughout that one but um oh oh i see <laughs> i'm gonna say that's booing all the uh the the people who will harass me on the street about Sorry, this wrong key uh-huh that's a freudian finger slip if i ever saw one um so yeah so um so self-deprecating kind of humor is definitely a tool that I rely on perhaps a little too much. Um, and, oh, I have two more examples and I can't decide between them, um, to, to share with, with all of y'all. Um, well, okay. So one, um, all of them, um, one, so one thing this actually, uh, will come into play a little bit later when we talk about our other examples, but, um, one thing, yeah, the meadow. One thing that I really find funny and I like to incorporate in my songs um, is uh, subverting expectations. And the meadow, which I co-wrote with my good friend Garrett, um, right here. Let me ask now. you a question. Have you ever thought about your blood flow? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> Thanks, though. Um, They're endlessly so, funny. <laughs> yeah, adds on is definitely a good call for this panel. Yeah. Um, so with this one, I don't know the exact timestamp. Um, I'm going to guess somewhere in the middle um, for this one. I did not, I did not prepare a timestamp. Okay. Um, 
run there. <laughs> <laughs> sure. That well, so so this song is the story, a fictitious story, of two friends who go into the woods to stargaze, and one of them decides to go off into the woods and take care of some personal business. Um, innuendo in intended, and um, this is kind of what happens. pretty much the end of it. Um, this one I do encourage anyone who's interested to go and listen to the full song because the story is not really as good in the 30 seconds that I just gave it, but um, this was the first example, not the last example, of um, Garrett and me being a songwriting team, um, but the the expectation when you start out when the song starts out and and you know they're they're hanging out stargazing having a nice innocent time and then it just completely dissolves into this raunchy ridiculousness and i i like to subvert expectations in that way um and then i will do <laughs> yes zachary raunchy i hate to i hate to break it to you that is a pg-13 rated song um and the last example I will do, if I may, is um, Crazy With You. And this one I'll just, uh, I'll do, I'll, we can start at the front, I'll just stop it after like a verse and a chorus. This actually is a song that has not aged very well um, because I wrote it at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and you can see uh, the vocal stylings of Garrett in this one as well. Sense of smell, and then you die. We don't have enough hospital beds, so everybody has to stay inside. At first, it sounds like a party, video games every day. Time to read or bake sourdough bread, but over time, our nerves start to fray. Take a look on. Every post looks the same. Spouse against partner, friend versus friend, as everybody slowly goes insane. But you and me, we're different. It probably helps we're introverts too. If I have to go crazy in quarantine, I'm glad I'm going crazy with you. All right, that's good. So yeah. And uh, topical humor, I guess. Um, oh my god, again. <laughs> I can't help but notice that Mario didn't get any booing for his songs. Um, but anyway, since Garrett is featured in like half of my music, um, take it away, Garrett.
Okay. You do have to unmute yourself, though. This is the silence is very okay. Funny. Well, that's really great because I was just like, "Hi, I'm Garrett," and I was no one heard my my big upswell of enthusiasm. Uh, I am still Garrett. I am allegedly funny. I uh, have been funny uh, for cash and also recreationally. Um, I thanks, thanks, Robbie. Um, this foley is killer. <laughs> Um, well, now I've lost whatever I was going to say. Uh, oh, but no, I, so for me, like, I mean, you talk about humor as a coping mechanism and yeah, I definitely have a lot of that going on. Um, but there's, there's also a, a mechanic to it, right? I mean, it's, it's about, uh, subversion of expectation and that expectation can be anything um you know the expectation can arise from social pressure uh the expectation can arise from just like uh the the context of when a person sits down uh you know to listen to like a bubbly singer songwriter song like margie's are before they take their abrupt left turn into nonsense um you know that's that's an expectation or or sometimes the expectation can be something built by the song itself um some of my favorite uh tracks by the lonely island uh, are are ones that set up like a really intricate rhyme scheme and then break it to just drop profanity completely out of left field um and it's not because it's like oh it's because they cursed it's because the rhyme scheme was like a a a a a a a a a like with increasing intricacy and then just like bam out of nowhere you you get hit with this um so playing with ways to build those expectations is is half of the fun for me yes absolutely um sorry Ravi said in the chat the contrast between the music and the lyrics is what makes margie's stuff so compelling so um i guess kind of my first example is something that i did with ravi um it was a a trailer for a video game series called fallout um and fallout derives a lot of its sense of humor from basically the world kind of ends in in nuclear hellfire uh kind of right in the middle of the 50s or at least aesthetically this 50s so you've got all this like gosh gee golly willikers leave it to beaver uh, you know, retro space age aesthetic um, married with just brutal acts of violence is what's left of humanity or scrabbling to survive. Um, and they got a lot of mileage out of that. So uh, Ravi called me and I think his exact words were, I've got this gig, I think it's your kind of weird. Um, and sure enough, I, you know, I was familiar with this enough to kind of tap into the juxtapositions they were already playing with and uh, I feel like they were pretty happy with it. Um, heads up, that content warning on the on the front is is no joke. This is a trailer that did air on TV, but there's some gunplay. Roll it. Welcome to Nuka World, America's favorite vacation destination. I'm Cappy. <laughs> oh, and I'm Bottle. And we're here to make sure sure you have F-U-N fun during your time at the park. What if there was a place with all the zip of nuka cola? Wouldn't that be the cheer cheer cheeriest place in all the world? Where the river's made of quantum and the mountain tops are fizz. With fun and games and rides for all the moms and pops and kids. But it turns out there's a place with all the zip of nuka cola. Come on down to nuka world and see it for yourself. Adventures for the van of this to see. Last of two galactic zones for otherworldly thrills. Down in dry rock cultures, cola, in limb for him. The world of refreshments, the most wonderful place. The friendly streets of Nuka Town put a smile on your face. Now you know there's a place that's just as great as Nuka Cola. 
So um, I guess a, a, another thing that I did lately, or not, I guess within the last couple of years that I was really pleased with, uh, some friends of mine were putting together a big uh, lush tribute album to, uh, to a classic video game soundtrack. Uh, you know, it's this big kind of fantasy epic swords and sorcery, if anyone's familiar with The Legend of Zelda. Uh, and, and the soundtrack... Uh, was kind of known for reaching beyond its uh, limitations at the time in in a big way. So this album was a chance for people who you know wrote orchestral music, who wrote rock music, uh, to kind of update some of those sounds and make them a little more modern. Um, and I was looking over the tracks, and what I chose because this was very funny to me was uh, a six second jingle that plays when you fail. Uh, a task. Um, and the trick was then to get something that was only kind of funny to me uh, and figure out how to make it funny to, to other people. So uh, part of the joke was that the people licensing this had to pay uh, in order to license uh, this six second track. And then part of it too was that I just like threw people at it. Um, there are over 100 different tracks going into this six second thing and then I thought okay well that's funny to me conceptually but how do I communicate this in a way that it's funny to people who don't have that background uh and this is what I came up with hopefully it's still funny on its own Quite the acting performance, Garrett. Thank you, thank you. Uh, for me, too, I think just like the the punishing length of the credits, um, I I really enjoyed that. I still enjoy that. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if I need to do anything else or or say anything else, or if this is kind of the introductions are done because I had another piece on here, but I realized there's something much shorter i margie is there any reason we couldn't play cranberry sauce if i dropped it in the chat do it do it tis the okay. season after all it is the season um so what's Sam's right. favorite song um i'm gonna drop this here if that's okay and uh, christmas classic for sure so one of the other things that I really like about humor or about openness to humor is that it's very liberating as a songwriting tool. If you're not worried, uh, you know, about conveying your deepest innermost every single time, you can just write stuff. Um, and half the time I like the things that I write when I'm just kind of churning stuff out more than I like the stuff that I've agonized over. So to that end, and I think we're going to, one of these days actually sit down and make it nice, but Margie and I um, shared a bottle or two of wine one evening and improvised uh, a Christmas album. Um, and this is one of the tracks from that. Actually, uh, Ravi, if you don't mind uh, rolling cranberry sauce. <laughs> Should only come from a can. You can spend lots of time making cranberry sauce on your own, but you're wrong. Cranberry sauce has a shape 
That shape is cylindrical with weird little ridges and it should maintain its shape when you poke it with a spoon. Oh, oh, oh. cranberry sauce is the reason for this time of year. Cranberry sauce in a can. You can just... Like that to, to me, like nobody stopped us from doing that. You can write a song about anything you want to, and no one will stop you. And I think that's beautiful. Um, and so it's that's, also a great way to game the Spotify algorithms. Yeah. Oh, well, no, they, they cut that out now. Your songs have to be like longer than such and such for it to count. Um, mm -hmm. I think Wolfpack made them very angry. Uh, and now my failure jingle never counts as a Spotify play either. They they ruined it for all of us. But um, that's me. So we're supposed to go till 3.30, which means our introductions have been the entire panel, <laughs> which is which is fine because we're listening to music and talking about all of the things I was going to ask you about anyway. But um, I think I think we should bring on Zach. Oh, yes. hi. I'll, I'll be quick um, because most be what quick. I'm going to say is pretty much exactly the same as what everyone else said, uh, because um, like Mario, I'm really big on uh, recontextualizing things. Um, my big thing is uh, lyrical dissonance, which is the idea that uh, and Margie does this with like everything. Um, the music sounds one way, but the lyrics are like a completely different flavor. Um, so uh so i do love doing that um and just like uh um page said this in chat and this and I, it really resonates with me um really deep let me let me find that again um oh page where is that thing you just said oh apocalyptic humor is the best yes yes apocalyptic humor is the best and uh i would like to add on to that in saying um if we're not laughing we're crying so therefore, you know, uh, we should write funny music about it. So I was on the same album, uh, the same uh, Legend of Link album that uh, um, Mr. Steele was on. And uh, I decided to do what I do best and that's disco. Um, so uh, had this song that they want me to do uh, uh, that's just called Milk Bar. And so I decided, hey, I'm gonna make this super sexy. And I wanted to make it into a Barry White piece. And uh, so Barry White, um, very deep, soulful voice that just, uh, you know, um, uh, so that kind of context of this like sexy time music, you know? Um, being juxtaposed with the idea of the moon's falling and we're gonna die. It might be tonight. Um, I, I felt like that was that was funny for some reason. So I, I kind of just ran with it. And uh, from the very get-go, um, you get uh, some little subtle hints of, yeah, we're probably gonna die, but let's just enjoy this moment, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, so yeah, that is uh, Fallen, uh, Disco in the Milk Bar. Baby, I know things have been scary lately, but when I see your face, mm, I just can't think of anything else. And that's all we got left, and let's make it Let's make it count, baby. Girl, you'll stay right here in my arms tonight. There is nothing outside. You know it feels right, yeah, my undying love. Baby, please, just take off that mask, feel the gravity. Don't 
turn off because we don't want to listen to Garrett, right? Um, so, <laughs> thanks. Just kidding. Yeah. Um, uh, um, uh, but if you do want to listen to more of Garrett, you should probably listen to the song uh, pretty soon uh, because uh, the song, just like uh, all of us with the, you, you know, impending apocalypse, it's going to disappear forever within like a couple weeks. So go listen to it now. Um, so long story there. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, it, I've got some other examples, but I think that kind of introduces my uh, uh, kind of uh, idea of what is humor. I think for me, part of what makes that track work is that there are a lot of uh, thematic and lyrical cohesion there are a lot of cohesion no you know what i mean though yeah. um like if you're if you're familiar with the game a lot of concepts a lot of kind of items are mentioned very obliquely and even if you're not familiar with the game um just the the image of of gravity the image of attraction the image of of descent just kind of repeatedly used in a bunch of different contexts uh mm -hmm. all all in the service of something that goofy it just it really really works on every level for me zach and i thank you again for uh having me revisit that and what's funny about that garrett is that your track on there uh the rap um run the rupees exactly the same everything you just said about this i, I would say about that the whole context thing uh is very true there as well thanks do you so feel a little bit like we're shortchanging the audience because we all turns yeah. out have the same exact like methods of like <laughs> using existing tropes subverting expectations using the irony of lyrics versus music it's really just the same thing four times so there was a question bandied uh, around uh, before about um if there's any failures uh where we we uh, yeah yeah took a swing and a miss and um I can, uh, the things that you can't joke about in our society are the problems of our society. And um, I've uh, on uh, several occasions tried to do uh, stuff like that. There was, a, uh, I found an old uh, a video uh, with George Putnam talking about the dangers of uh, homosexuality. And it was just really, really wrong. And in my arrogance, I thought that I could write the score for this and undermine. Uh, and I, I'm really, I really like what I did for it. But at the end of the day, when, I, when it came back to me, I realized that more than undermining, I was underlining. Yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't good enough or I, I, missed the, uh, I missed a point here or there. And... Uh, I ended up drawing more attention to something that that I intended to mock. Mm -hmm. um, so th there, there is a fine. You have to be sensitive, and and uh, somewhere in there, I missed that. And that that happens occasionally. I don't know if any of you guys have uh, experiences like that. Uh, yeah. So I was uh, putting together a uh, an album. I've been sorting through my emotions uh, by by writing rap lyrics for a long time. It's it's a form that I deeply love. It's a form I I, I deeply respect. And a, you know, studying a lot of doom and a lot of Method Man and you know just a lot of the you know Wu Tang stuff and uh, uh, you know a, a lot of the people who, who resonate with me. And and so I I set out to to make a hip hop album. And this was gosh maybe 10 years ago at this point I think I had in my mind that I was going to take you know some of the uh issues endemic with uh the the form and the style at the time and kind of balloon them to ridiculous points uh kind of like you know Tenacious D has done with with metal um and I was kind of glad that I didn't actually get that album finished at the time, because as the years went by, I, I looked at it and realized, well, we don't really need more sarcastic machismo, uh, because there's so much genuine toxic machismo floating around right now um, that, that the two are kind of indistinguishable. 
And, you know, I, I, I think it's really easy. There's, there's a really common style of humor to just kind of say something awful. And then if you get yelled at it to go, oh, well, I was only joking, you know, and I, I never want to do that. Um, a, because it's shitty and B, because it's lazy. Um, and, I, and I was worried that I was skimming too close to that. Um, I think the other kind of danger of when you do something like that is you, uh, for the people who are like on the right side of, 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 of an issue, you know, everyone who's kind of looking down and like winking at uh, a risky joke kind of ironically, um, you never know who will be kind of secretly or even overtly laughing at it on the surface level, right? Um, and so I kind of took a look at what I had written and went, well, I'm proud of some of the things that are clever here, but I'm not comfortable with the overall vibe. So I went back and retooled everything from the ground up, uh, to make sure at the end of the day, the core of the material was, uh, playfully outrageous. There was a lot of outsized stuff. Um, there, there was a lot of exaggerated boasting, which kind of actually became a way for me to work through some of my uh, self-esteem issues. Uh, but, but what there wasn't was uh, punching down, you know, uh, and actually kind of over the course of that, I, I had an opportunity to go, okay, what, well, why are dick jokes so funny to me? Uh, you know, and, and the answer wound up, well, I'm, I'm actually deeply uncomfortable with my gender. Uh, so the album wound up being uh, titled in direct reference to that. Uh, and, it, and it became a whole different project. And it became, I think, a much richer project because I stepped back and realized all the things I didn't want to do with it. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. That was that was a time that I felt like I missed the mark, and I, I was glad. I was glad I thought about it enough to realize that I had. It's interesting because I think both uh, when both what you and Mario were talking about, like I always think of comedy is so much about context, and <laughs> and music. At, when you compare music to like stage or you know even literature or um film like music's very portable and can be recontextualized in all sorts of ways that you can't you can't control it once it gets out there so you have to think about what if this thing that i created is recontextualized we had we so when we were working on um the the soundtrack for Wolfenstein, the, the big reboot um, that Bethesda put out, we were in charge of creating all of these German rock bands. And the as we decided what these bands were going to be like and what they were going to be singing about, it, then the question became, well, what happens if these songs just get taken up by white nationalists? You know, where, how do you, you know, where do you, how do you write something that's that brings out that contrast in the this in the alternate universe of a 1960s where Germany was, has won the war and it's the Nazi party but not create material that can be you know wildly uh, misappropriated and <laughs> so we, we had to nix a couple of uh, lyric sheets um, including one called it was a love song called blue eyes forever Oh no. <laughs> yeah. It was a really funny song, but it was totally over the line for that project. And, and, uh, so yeah, it's, it's really, it's really interesting. Um, I, the thing about that material that I, that I love though, uh, you know, you, you talk about the, the history of rock and roll, uh, and, and the history of rock and roll really is kind of a, a history of, of, black artists innovating and white artists kind of stealing and making it profitable. Uh, and if you go back and you listen to a lot of the records um, that were popular versus the records that were, you know, kind of shelved because they were race records, um, 
the stuff that got airplay, the whitewash stuff is so much squarer, uh, so much more rigid uh, in terms of like the the tempo, the beat, the percussion. It's it's very dull. Uh, and and the Wolfenstein music took that to such a ridiculous extreme. Uh, it's it's a freaking triumph, Ravi. I mean, it 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 really is. Uh, you, you, you just nailed the, the, the stylistic, you know, I mean, ultimately, yeah, the answer to what happens when that white nationalists try to make rock and roll music without any, you know, uh, influences that they wouldn't approve of. And the answer is it's, it's dull as hell. Yeah. The, uh, the, um, the, the, uh, the songs themselves weren't funny. It was the way they, it was mostly the way they were performed and how they were put into the game um, that made them funny. Um, I think we're actually out of time. Um, I, I did want to create a space if anybody had a burning question. Otherwise, I have something fun to take us out on. Um, but are there any, any questions from the crowd that we can, we can a address? Uh, a Q and A section about comedy. I don't think so. So, um, since we were just talking about um, uh, white artists who have appropriated black music and built a career on it, um, I thought I would take us out with one of my favorite examples of how actually removing music, not adding music, can make something incredibly funny. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to hit play on this and. Um, Everybody can can say their goodbyes in the chat or, or whatever. Excellent. That's fantastic. <laughs> Sometimes uh, removing the music makes it funnier. Bye, everybody. Thank you for coming. <laughs>